Hello everyone and welcome to the waves portion of the course. So here we're going to build a little on what we talked about last week, although for just this video we're not going to get into any math just yet. We're going to talk just about qualitatively what is a wave, how can we describe waves. Before we get to that though, we should probably answer the first question of what, what actually is a wave. So a wave is any kind of disturbance in a medium which propagates, by which I mean travels, through space, so from one place to another. I know for sure you deal with waves every day of your life. Uh, you might be one of those people who's lucky enough, you actually go to the beach every day and see the waves crashing against the shore, or perhaps you, you know, throw rocks into ponds or something like that, or, or uh, see other kinds of waves. But I know for certain that every day you're dealing with sound waves, you're dealing with light waves, and, and other phenomena which we'll not describe quite yet, we'll get to uh, fairly soon. Now the first kind of wave we're going to deal with is what we call a transverse wave. So a transverse wave is where the direction of motion of our, of our medium, so you can see here we've got uh, our medium is a slinky or a spring which just by default is flat, it's just held out in a straight line, and we disturb it by moving it up and down quite rapidly, you can see that parts of the spring are moving up and down and then get back to their medium position after the wave has passed. So the direction of propagation of the wave is perpendicular to the motion of the particles as the wave passes. There are a whole lot of kinds of transverse waves, from water waves to you know, physical waves in strings and springs and things like that all the way to light. Light is actually a kind of transverse wave, which we'll get to uh, eventually. The other main kind of wave is what we call a longitudinal wave. So you can see we've got again, our medium in this case is the spring or the slinky again, which is why they're so useful for describing waves. But in this case, I've given it a quick sharp push and we can see the wave is, is propagating towards the right through our, through our material. And the direction of motion of the particles, and it's a bit hard to tell here, but there's this compression where the particles move to the left or right. So the direction of propagation of the wave is parallel to the actual motion of the particles. So these are our two main kinds of waves. We're going to stick with transverse waves for a little bit, and we'll come back to longitudinal waves after that. The first thing you're probably wondering is, waves are a kind of motion. How can we describe them in a nice, neat way without having to, you know, take 20 photos of this thing and stacking them all on top of each other. So ideally, we, we'll be able to draw some kind of a graph to describe the motion. So to demonstrate this, I've got a, a piece of rope, perhaps. Uh, I'm going to give the rope a flick like this, and I, I flick it, and we have our wave propagates along. And uh, in reality, it's not going to come to a stop like that, but I've chosen to just essentially take a photo of the wave and freeze it, freeze its motion. So I'm going to want to draw a graph which describes how much our medium has displaced from its equilibrium position uh, compared to its position at some particular point in time. So I've, I've, I've frozen it, I'm just going to draw a graph which is essentially going to look like, if I get up a set of axes, our, we set up our axes, this graph is going to look exactly like the same shape as our, as our rope. So you can see here the distance from our equilibrium position. So the vertical axis here, I should have labelled it as our displacement, and our horizontal axis is position along our medium. And we start at zero, where our, where our object is not displaced very much at all from the medium. We have very low uh, displacement on our axis here. Where the displacement is large, our uh, displacement is large. This is called a snapshot graph, literally because it, it, it's a snapshot. We've taken a photo of our wave and we've just slapped axes on it and called it a graph. You could build, you could take, a, make a whole lot of these graphs and build a whole series of them and describe the motion of a wave, just snapshot, snapshot, snapshot. But there's a, a somewhat more elegant way to describe the motion of our particle over time. So let's take our straight wave again. And this time, I'm going to, again, have the vertical axis of our uh, graph B, our displacement, but our horizontal axis is going to be time. So I want to say, what does our, our motion of our particles look like over time? 
However, I can't, I can't draw the whole string, all of, all of the positions over time without, with, with only two dimensions, I need three dimensions. And we'll actually, uh, later on I'll show you a, a picture of, of, of how we can do that. But for the time being, I'm going to have to choose a, a single position on our wave, on our, on our medium, and just describe what's happening as our wave passes. So over here somewhere I'm going to give it a flick, and our wave is going to propagate along, and as it does, we're going to graph the position, the, the displacement at this point here. So in case you missed that, uh, as our wave moves along, the displacement goes up and then it, it comes back down and we, our graph looks something like this. So the first thing to note about this, we call this a history graph because the horizontal axis is time, so the graph is showing us the history of our wave as it passes this point. So in this case, our leading edge hits our, hits our point first because it's to the right and we're traveling to the right, it hits this point first and so because it comes earlier it comes more to the left on our graph. The trailing edge uh, which is to the left of our wave travels, uh, ends up being at the end so it's on the right hand side of the graph. Interestingly, and you, you, this doesn't actually come up I think in the textbook and I've struggled to find animations online, if we were to take our motion right to left instead, in this case, the leading edge of our wave is on the left, so when it moves past our point, the leading edge hits first and we end up drawing it in the same shape as our, as our, wave, as our, as our actual physical wave. So this is all well and good for the example I've got here of a transverse wave on a rope. The snapshot graph is physically a, a photograph of our wave. The history graph is, is a similar thing, but it's, it's our motion over time. How can we apply this to a longitudinal wave? So here's an example of a longitudinal wave. It's a bit hard to make, make out what's happening compared to the spring from earlier, but this is a, essentially a sound wave of some kind, and you can see our, our particles are moving to the left and right, while the, the wave itself is propagating towards the right. So let's, let's take a, a, a few snapshots of or, or photos of, of what our medium actually looks like here. So here we have our medium is initially evenly spaced points and our at time t equals zero some of our some of our points are displaced from that equilibrium and over time our wave is going to propagate uh, along. So how can I draw a snapshot graph of this? Well it's actually not too difficult. We're going to do exactly the same thing as we do with the transverse wave except in this case so let's set up some axes, I'm not terribly neat. We we'll call this position and call this uh, displacement. I'll, call, I'll give this a, a D for displacement. And we see, well, what's our displacement at the first couple of points? Well, it's, it's zero, so I'm just going to go across zero. This point here, if you can make out my hand, is displaced to the right. And uh, so I'm, I'm going to call rightwards displacement positive displacement. This one here is displaced even more to the right. So by this point, uh, or by the time I get to there, this point, it, this corresponds to its initial point in the medium, uh, we're displaced a long way to the right. And then the next one is displaced, actually, it's only a little bit displaced to the right, so we end up, our displacement comes down. This point in the middle here is not displaced at all. And by the time we get to these further points, they're actually displaced to the left. And I should have thought about this before I drew my axes. But we're going to go below the axis, something like this, and then come back. And so we can draw a snapshot graph over this particular longitudinal wave. It looks exactly the same as the snapshot graph of some kind of transverse wave, but uh, in this case, describing a longitudinal wave. So that's all I'm going to cover for now. Uh, we're going to come back and talk about these kinds of snapshot graphs, history graphs, and we're going to get into the maths of waves, but we're going to do it with uh, sinusoidal waves, which are essentially the, the wave version of the simple harmonic motion we talked about last week. So I'll see you then.